सर थोड़ा सा आप थोड़ा सा लाउडली बात करिएगा क्योंकि वो थोड़ी सी आपकी आवाज में मेरे पास तक स्लो आ रही है जी मैं कोशिश करूंगा थोड़ा तेज बोलू ठीक है ना जैसे जी जैसे जी आगे आगे आप जाएंगे वो जैसे जैसे आगे बढ़ेंगे तो बहुत तेज होता है जी जी सर सर स्टार्ट ले सकते हैं आप So at the end uh, of this uh, lecture, uh, most, uh, hopefully we will be able to define uh, the uh, demography and uh, we will be able to acknowledge uh, the uh, importance of uh, demography and uh, the stages. Uh, what is the demographic uh, transition? What is the demographic transition cycle? And what are the different stages of the demographic transition cycle? And what is the demographic uh, uh, trap? What is the uh, population projection? Population projection means uh, that uh, how can we predict that uh, what, what will be the population of a certain area in uh, future? And uh, uh, what are the doubling time uh, of uh, different uh, population segments? Or different population um, ecologic uh, uh, areas, uh, uh, for example. Sir, so, थोड़ा सा loudly बात loudly बोलिएगा क्योंकि आवाज नहीं आ रही है. Participants भी एक जरा. For example, if you want to uh, know uh, that what will be the population of uh, uh, when will be the population of Pakistan will be doubled, then uh, how can we calculate it? And uh, then uh, different demographic measures. Uh, what are the demographic uh, measures uh, uh, there? And then uh, different sources of the data from where we uh, collect or we find out the data, and uh, which are uh, you know the census uh, and the different surveys, vital events, uh, registrations, uh, and etc. etc. For example, the birth registrations, uh, the death registrations, uh, and the marriage registrations. Uh, Graveyard registrations, etc., etc. Okay, as if आवाज clear है. Sir, slow आ रही है अभी भी आवाज थोड़ी सी आपकी क्योंकि वो बिल्कुल clearance नहीं आ रही है इसमें. Participants भी यही बात कर रहे हैं. Okay, हम इसको जो है एक मिनट दूसरा वो करते हैं. Uh, in uh, difficult, different uh, medical sciences disciplines, there are very few disciplines which overlap that much that uh, to the other disciplines as the demographic uh, demography did it or does it in uh, different things. It uh, <coughs> uh, it uh, overlaps uh, the statistics and the, the statistics uh, deals with the likelihoods and the survival analysis. It overlaps uh, in uh, sociology, finding the socio-cultural explanations of uh, fertility, uh, mortality, and uh, the marriages, and the economy, and then uh, the uh, geography, ecology, and uh, then uh, the uh, different health uh, uh, sciences. So uh, demography has to do uh, something in each uh, of. Uh, Each of these uh, disciplines, and uh, when we uh, discuss these disciplines, uh, demography uh, comes here uh, and here, uh, one way or another. Here, 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 सर अब लगाए बेहतरीन आवाज है इसकी तो 
दबा के रखना पड़ता है थोड़ा दबा के रखना बहुत तेज आवाज हो जाएगी so uh, what the demography is is uh, uh, the uh, 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 try to find out the the bottom should be in the case of the other uh, demography uh, by definition uh, we can say that it is the scientific study of human population uh with respect to uh, their size did you get that sir aap ki awaaz slow aa rahi hai slow aa rahi hai slow aa rahi hai सर मैंने आपको थोड़ा सा लाउडली बोलना पड़ेगा क्योंकि बहुत स्लो आ रही है पोजीशन है जी सर अब क्या पोजीशन है वैसे ही स्लो आ रही है सर अब बेहतर हुई है मगर ये इसको दबा के रखना है मसला है इसको पकड़ के रखना पड़ेगा हां से पकड़ के okay in a uh, very uh, simple words uh, if we want to uh, define the demographic we may say that uh, demography is the study of uh, population relation okay so uh, in uh, detail we may say that the demography is scientific study of human population with respect to uh, their size uh, their dynamics uh, there are changes and composition changes in composition are the uh, structure number <clears throat> this study includes uh, different uh, uh, gatherings uh, different organizations uh, analysis uh, <clears throat> आवाज कैसी है हेलो आसिफ सर थोड़ा सा माइक को सर करीब करें अब आवाज कुछ बेहतर हुई सर कुछ बेहतर हो रही है लेकिन अभी भी थोड़ी थोड़ी सी स्लो है अगर तो और लाउडली हो जाए अब थोड़ा तेज करूंगा ना इसको जब बोलना शुरू करूंगा तो Yeah, so uh, the demography uh, is uh, the scientific study of human population with uh, <coughs> uh, respect to their size, the size of the population, dynamics, their changes, and composition, their structure. This study includes uh, different gatherings, organizations, analysis, and description and interpretation of data relating to the changing numbers and the geographic distribution. of human beings uh, their characteristics and their vital processes so this uh, may be uh, the detailed uh, description uh, of the definition of uh, demography is uh, but if you want to remember it uh, in uh, very simple uh, numbers you may just remember that uh, demography is uh, the study of uh, population variation and how we study the population variation in demography and you will see in the uh, further slides uh, okay so what is this uh, first you see uh, see a uh, different numbers uh, review them uh, that uh, what are the different numbers past and present and in future so you see the estimated uh, world population growth through uh, the history you can uh, find it out that if you see that thousand years bc and the population at that time was only uh, 5 million so, uh, 
in the 50 lakhs, uh, 10,000 years BC means uh, near about 12,000 years before now. Okay, the only population was uh, to 250 million. Okay, so about two and a half. Uh, uh, that almost doubled in about one and a half thousand years. In 1650 or 1600, this population doubled. That uh, it came from 250 million to 545. Uh, this doubling took uh, near about one and a half thousand years. How much years uh, it took to double again? And then you see. This uh, 545 million became 906 million in 1800, near about in 150 million. It doubled. So uh, the first doubling took uh, 1600 years, one half years almost. But the second double took, uh, you see, uh, that 150 years. So the next uh, doubling. From 900 to uh, near about say 1800, uh, it took so uh, how many years? From 1800 to 1900. In uh, just 100 years, and this is what the population is decreasing day by day. And if you continue to see this, that uh, from 1600 to 3200, this is the 3600, and uh, what that it took only 70 years. From 1900, from 1608 uh, millions, it became to 3600 and then about 37. Uh, 3,700 millions in just 70 years. And the next, next doubling just took 20 years. From uh, this uh, three years, uh, uh, 4,000 to this 6,000, just from 1972, 2,000, 30 years. And then uh, uh, in the next uh, 50 years, what will happen is uh, 6 billion, which will go to near about more than uh, 9 billion. So, it will uh, see in other way uh, that uh, 1 billion is uh, being added in only this 50 years from 1900, 1600 to 2500. So 1 billion added here. But the next billion was added only in 20 years. So the first, uh, first billion here added in uh, 50 years. And the next billion was added in just uh, 20 years, 50 to 70. And the next billion from 3,600 to 4,400, see in just 10 years. This is how, how rapidly the uh, population of the uh, world is uh, multiplying its, uh, it, in, in itself. And uh, now at the time, in uh, near about uh, 2020, uh, the, uh, at the time, the population of the world is near about 7.8 billion, which will uh, become uh, more than 9 uh, million. Uh, which is uh, uh, estimated, the uh, projected estimate. But uh, the another uh, the worst part uh, the, uh, of this increase in population is that that most of this increase is occurring in the uh, less developed or the uh, developing countries. So you see this 80% uh, of the increase in population is occurring in uh, these less developed countries. <clears throat> This is the world total. These are the less developed countries, and these gray area. This is uh, these are the more developed countries. So the population of the more developed countries from 750 up till uh, up till let's say to uh, 2050 is just increased by 20 uh, percent. So, for example, say uh, the uh, total population of uh, the uh, more developed countries is near about. Uh, Say uh, one crore for supposition, so it has increased from one crore to one crore and twenty uh, less. Uh, that means uh, about one hundred and twenty million. But if the population of this eighty percent increase occurred in this uh, less developed countries, so if the population in supposition uh, of these underdeveloped countries was one crore here, so it has become uh, one point eight crore here, so one hundred and eighty million from hundred million. So uh, this is the increase, 80% of the increase is occurring in uh, the uh, less developed countries, 
while uh, the 20% only is increasing in the developed countries. And this is the another worst scenario of this increase in population. So, number one, the increase in numbers, and number, number two, the increase in which areas, in which segments of the population, or in which area of the world, these are the two areas of uh, concern. So, if you see the world's population growth rates and uh, their uh, doubling time, so uh, you can see. <coughs> Approximate uh, growth rate uh, from uh, the uh, appearance of humans uh, to early historical times, uh, if it was a 0.002% growth rate, the population has to be doubled in 36,000 years. So it is uh, the uh, era of uh, the before uh, Jesus. Then in uh, 1650 to 1750 during this uh, 100 years, the population growth rate was 0.3%. So if the population growth rate is 0.3%, your population is going to be doubled in 240 years, 2,500, 250 years, near about. Uh, and this was the growth rate uh, in between uh, these 100 years. Then uh, from 1850 to 19, this population growth rate doubled. Uh, from 0.3 it becomes to 0.6. So uh, the doubling time uh, became half or less than half because uh, the formula of the compound interest is being applied here. So it will uh, not be uh, exactly half, but it will be less than half. So the population doubling time, uh, if uh, the growth rate is doubled, the doubling time is uh, less than half. It is 115 years. And if uh, the population growth rate of any area is uh, one percent uh, so uh, if uh, there are 100 percent 100 population of an area after one year it becomes 101 so if this is the uh, population growth rate then the population of that area will be doubled in 72 years so this was the growth rate in, uh, between the 19th century 1930 to 1950 and the population was doubling at that time within 72 years but what is uh, happening in 1960 80 where the population growth rate was 2.3 so the population uh, doubling time of the universe of the world was 30 years now the population uh, growth rate has declined uh, slightly and uh, at the time uh, the population growth rate uh, of the world is 1.37 and uh, with this growth rate the population will be doubled in 50 years so if uh, <coughs> i'm saying that the uh, population of uh, the world is uh, near about, uh, say, uh, 7.8 billion right now. So uh, with this uh, growth rate of 1.37%, uh, the population will be, uh, after uh, 53 years, that, in, that means uh, near about in 2073, 2073 uh, AD, the population will become more than 18 billion, it will be doubled in the next uh, 53 years. But uh, what will really happen uh, in the future, we will uh, try to predict. So, this is uh, again a uh, demographic uh, uh, representation of the population growth rate. Uh, how the growth rate uh, increased uh, from uh, 1.5 from 1950, it was near about 1.5. Then, uh, then it increased uh, to uh, Two percent, and then uh, again uh, fall back to uh, this uh, less than 1.5, say near about 1.4 percent, and then again increase for more than two percent. What happened in this area? This is the era of the Second World War, uh, where uh, millions and uh, millions, so near about uh, uh, 20 million, though crore, uh, near about uh, people uh, died uh, uh, killed in this uh, second world war uh, because of uh, uh, because of the war because of the effects of the war that draws uh, the uh, malnutrition and the factors uh, so the growth rate uh, declined in this era but it again uh, raised uh, in the post war post second world war era and it again went to more than 2.2 uh, near about uh, uh, percent so then it slightly uh, it started declining and uh, now uh, in 2020 it is near about at uh, 1% uh, and if you very correctly say it is 1.37%. So uh, difference in different uh, data uh, agencies. So 
overall the world population uh, was uh, growing uh, at the rate of over 2% in the 1960s, but the growth rate is decreasing and uh, will soon be below uh, 1% uh, in 2014. So what will happen uh, with uh, this uh, decreased uh, uh, growth rate uh, or the decreased uh, birth rate and uh, uh, what are other factors which will affect uh, the uh, increased uh, growth rate of the world? Uh, as uh, society uh, modernizes, uh, first uh, what happens, the deaths and the mortalities uh, decreases uh, because of uh, the advancement in the science, advancement in the health uh, technologies, uh, the new drugs, uh, the new diagnostic criteria, the early diagnosis, uh, better health uh, care situations, uh, better uh, uh, sanitation, uh, better disposal of beds, better safer supply, better diets. So all these things, uh, what they do, they increases the life expectancy and they decreases the mortality or the deaths. Okay, the deaths decreases, but if the birth will not decrease, then the population will uh, go on increasing. So now, uh, what uh, wise countries has did that they provided better health care to decrease the debt, to, uh, to lengthen the life, to increase the life expectancy, but on the same time, they de decreased their fertility. Uh, that means they decreased uh, in their birth rates. So if the birth rate is low and the death rate is low, then the population is not, will not increase uh, with that pace. But if the birth rate will be high, and the death rate will be low, then the population will, will naturally increase. And uh, in other uh, scenario, if the birth rate is high, but the death rate is high again, both are high, the more people are getting born and more people are dying. So the population growth will be low. So this was the uh, situation in uh, uh, previous eras before 80, where uh, more people uh, were getting born, uh, see this, uh, the birth rates and the death rates both are high. More people were being born and more people uh, were being died. So the growth rate was maintained. Okay, There was no any increase or very less increase. But what happened in the transitional stages when the health status uh, uh, got better, when uh, science uh, was advanced, better health situation, better treatment, better treatment, better prevention, better diagnostic that became. Then what happened that uh, these uh, death rates uh, declined. These uh, death rates uh, declined. And the uh, birth rate uh, remained uh, there, uh, sustained. So what happened? The population increased, but uh, observed uh, Okay, so the population in, population increased uh, with a very great pace in this area, in this era. But then uh, the science worked to decrease this population uh, birth rate. And when the death rate declined, the growth rate uh, started decreasing and the population growth uh, decreased. So the ultimate uh, future or the ultimate uh, present in the developed countries and the future in the developing countries is like this balance where the births are low and the deaths are low as well. So the population increase is sustained at certain levels. So you uh, have two choices you know, to uh, decrease the population growth rate. One choice is that this one is if there are high birth rate, the death rates uh, are high and then the population will not increase, the growth rate will be sustained or maintained at, uh, at uh, an appropriate pace. Or this is the more uh, wise choice, the low birth rate and low death rate. Whoever has one, he will enjoy a uh, longer life, life expectancies will be uh, longer and the death rates will become in between. If some country decreases the death rate, which every country will decrease with the advancement of the uh, medicine, but they do not decrease the birth rate as the Pakistan is doing at the time, as uh, the India is doing at the time, or other developing countries are doing. That the birth uh, are sustained at a high rate, but the death has decreased, so their population will increase. So uh, the population growth rate of Pakistan at the time is near about uh, two point five percent. So uh, with this population growth rate, uh, <clears throat> what will happen? 
what will happen? It will happen that uh, the population will double in next 35 years. So what do we mean? That uh, now in uh, 2020, the total population of Pakistan is uh, near about uh, 220 uh, million. So uh, if you want to be very correct uh, on uh, today, uh, the population of Pakistan is uh, near about by uh, crore uh, nine lakh uh, ninety one thousand five hundred and fifty three. This is the uh, today's population of Pakistan. So this population of twenty two crore will be doubled in next uh, thirty five years. Next thirty five years uh, because our growth rate is two point five. Even uh, less than thirty five years because if uh, the growth rate of any country is two percent, then the uh, doubling rate will be thirty five years. Then if uh, two point five percent, it will be almost in thirty one years. So in twenty fifty, the population of Pakistan will be near about forty four crore, four hundred and forty million. So this is what happened. If you will not, uh, we will not uh, decrease uh, the birth rate, and uh, the death rate will go on decreasing. What will happen when the population will be increased at much pace? The resources uh, will be diminished. This will be a scar, and then there will again be increased, and they will again go back to uh, this pre-industrial state. This is called the demographic trap. What is the demographic trap? That one country from high birth rate and high death rate, it decreases its death rate, but do not decreases the birth rate. So it comes in the second stage, transitional stage. Where the population increases with a great pace, and uh, due to the fast increase in population and less resources, these uh, uh, resources are scarce, and the death rate again increases and it goes back in that uh, pre industrial stage. This is the demographic trap, and this whole stages, the four stages, are being called the demographic transition cycle. So the four stages are pre industrial stage, transitional stage, industrial stage. Post industrial stage, pre industrial stage where the birth and death both are high, transitional stage where death, death is declining but the birth is not declining, and the industrial stage where the birth is declining and the death has already declined but the birth is started declining and then the real post industrial stage we want to uh, achieve that the birth rates are low and the death rates are low. This is what the demographic transition cycle and demographic trap is demographic trap when one country comes from the pre-industrial stage to the transitional and then goes back to the pre-industrial stage now see our uh, gdp growth rate <coughs> national income uh, growth rate is uh, near about uh, three percent say at the time it is almost because of this corona and the economic crisis it is on below three percent so if it is uh, say three percent and our population growth rate is 2.5 percent so whatever we increases nationally on a national scale in our income is being dispensed on the newborn babies so we cannot increase the qualities of life of those who are already there we cannot uh, spend money on those so this is how the quality life standards uh, life quality will not increase in our stages uh, this is again uh, the comparison of the population growth rates in the developed and the developing countries and you can see the uh, growth rate the growth of uh, population is increasing in the developed countries uh, from 1950 uh, from 2% it went to 2.3 then it slightly started uh, to decline so it is from 2.1% to 1.8% meaning that the death rate has already declined but the growth uh, birth rate is, is started to decline so it means this is this is the birth rate is started to decline. So all the uh, developing countries are in uh, uh, these this stage, the social stage or the industrial stage. But the rate has started to decline. But all the developed countries you see are in this stage where the birth rate uh, death rate has declined and the birth rate is has declined as well. See the developed countries. The, the growth rate is near about two in 1950 and 60 in between there, and now the birth rate has declined to near about 0.1 percent. Means if their population is 1000, after one year their population is 1001 only. On 1000 people, one person will one person will increase in uh, uh, one year. 
So uh, there are uh, different countries in the world where their growth rate is in uh, uh, is uh, at uh, say replacement level. Uh, what is this replacement level that uh, each couple is uh, giving born to two children, and if the two children are born and the two are dying. So these children are just replacing uh, their parents. So the population will uh, not increase and it will be sustained at a certain level. And this is called uh, the uh, uh, replacement level. But there are certain countries uh, where their population uh, uh, growth rates, uh, population growth rates are uh, uh, in negative. So their population in the, is uh, decreasing instead of increasing. For example, the two parents are dying. But those two parents are giving uh, birth to only one child, so their population are decreasing. And uh, you know, the same example uh, is of uh, China, that uh, the rule of uh, one family, one child, uh, they uh, kept uh, this rule for near about uh, 30 years, so that any family, any couple cannot produce more than one child. So uh, their population uh, uh, was maintained for a few decades, and then it started de uh, decreasing. Now, they have changed the rules and they have the child per family. So this is uh, in the developing uh, countries and uh, consists of several death rates and high birth rates. Death rates uh, uh, fall rise. And so population in the industry where the birth rates fall avoid uh, working in offices and different areas and so uh, as a children's uh, model uh, predicts a huge geographic redistribution of uh, population what is the redistribution of population See, Europe's share is expected to decline from its present 10 percent uh, at the time uh, the population share of the euro and the total global population is 10 percent uh, and uh, it will become six percent in 2100 because the population of europe is uh, sustained at a certain level or it is in slightly negative uh, growth rate but uh, the growth of the population of Africa and Asia is increasing. So the growth of population of Africa's share in the global population will increase from 13% to 22%. So this is the geographic redistribution of the population. And this model depicts a grain population. As fewer babies are born and life expectancy increases by 2100, the proportion of people over the age of 60 will increase from today's 10% to 34%. Now see. The pupils who has born, already born, they will enjoy a longer life, okay? Uh, they will not die earlier. Their life expectancy will be more than 70 years, which is near about 60 at, uh, right now. So they will enjoy a longer life. And the less number of the babies will be born. So that means the uh, percentage or the proportion of the pupils over the age of 60 will increase. And that will increase globally uh, from 10%, which is now up to 34%. That will be another geriatric uh, group of the medicine has to work. Population projection uh, means uh, <clears throat> what will be the population uh, in next 10 years or in next 20 years. This is the pro projection. And this is uh, done by a formula or the demographic equation, and the, which is uh, P total plus 1 is equal to P total plus total 0 plus birth minus death. Okay, but minus that can be uh, says uh, mentioned as natural increase. Natural increase is equal to birth minus that. So instead of uh, B minus D, we can write here uh, N I natural increase, and then uh, the net migration. Net migration means so in migration and out migration minus how many people came in, how many people went out. So what is the real increase of the present population? This will be called the net migration. Okay, N I. So we can write down this formula as uh, P T plus one means the projected population is equal to P T zero means the present population plus natural increase. Natural increase means birth minus death plus net migration and then net migration. Net migration means in migration minus out migration. So this all birth minus death plus in migration minus out migration or in other words, uh, natural increase plus net migration in, in sum 
they may be mentioned as growth rate, population growth rate r so we can write here p present population plus r means uh, p plus the growth rate so first calculate the growth rate through this formula and put that growth rate here plus after plus and then you will uh, be able to find out the uh, projected uh, population now see the example of uh, so now see with the help of uh, this equation <coughs> Uh, for example, see uh, the estimate of Pakistan's population in 2012. Pakistan population in 1998. Suppose we are here standing at 1998. So uh, 1998 means uh, that the population in 1998 is 132.4 million. Means P T0 population at present is in 1998 is 132.4 million. And uh, what we want, we want uh, that what will be the population in 2012, in 1998, from 1998 to 2012, means after 14 years, what will be the population. So our formula is P, present population, bracket, 1 plus R, this is the same thing, 1 plus R, 1 plus the growth rate, means C. What do we mean by 1 plus growth rate? Here, this, this is the formula, this is growth rate. So, P, T plus 1, 1 plus growth rate. So, now put in here the growth rate. Okay. Now, see, for example, uh, growth rate is uh, 0 0.021. Means uh, natural increase plus net migration is equal to 0 0.021. So, 1 plus 0 0.021 multiplied by how many years the projected population here? It was from 1998 to 2012, 14 years. So, 14 years and we calculated it uh, 14 years and it became 1 plus 0 0.021 multiplied by 14 is 1.32 and uh, 1.32 multiplied by the present population it uh, came to 174.7 million in 2015. So and uh, here uh, <coughs> the growth rate population is 1.8 uh, that has been uh, suppose so now see so agar if population is 1.8 if the population growth rate is 0 0.021 uh, then the population will be 74 but if the population suppose growth rate has been changed to 1.84 then it will be 170 million doubling time is very uh, easily calculated but the, in one year the population will be covered uh, in uh, any area so uh, if you will see uh, doubling time formula is uh, very easy that is 70 divided by the growth rate whatever the growth rate of an area is uh, 70 you divide 70 by that area and you will find out the, uh, uh, find out the uh, doubling time of that uh, area for example the uh, <coughs> uh, growth rate of pakistan at the time is say 22.5 percent you divide uh, uh, 70 by 2.5 and you will get the doubling time of the pakistan population for example say the doubling time of uh, uh, the growth rate of any area is 2%, 70 divided by 2, the doubling time of that uh, area will be 35. If it is uh, growth rate is 3%, divide 70 by 3, the doubling time will be 23.3 years. So Pakistan's uh, growth rate is 2.5, so it will be somewhere in between 23.3 to 35 uh, years. It's 31 years near about, or 30 years near about, it will be there. If uh, uh, growth rate is 0.5%, then the doubling time will be 70 divided by 0.5 is equal to 140 years. And uh, similarly, you can calculate uh, uh, for different percentages. So uh, here, here you see, this is the 0.1%. This is the growth rate of the developed countries. For with this growth rate, the population of the developed countries will double in 700 years. In 700 years, uh, it will be doubled. And similarly, you can uh, calculate the doubling time of any area uh, on the basis of uh, this formula and on the basis of the growth rate of this area. There are different uh, demographic measures uh, <clears throat> through which uh, we uh, measure the demographic of uh, that area. They are the rates, uh, they are the ratios, and they are the proportions. Ratios are the relation of one population segment, one population subgroup to another population. And this is being uh, 
calculated uh, uh, that one sub subgroup divided by another multiplied by 100. For example, male to female ratio. So uh, we, uh, if we want to calculate the male to female ratio of an area, male in that area divided by females in that area multiplied by 100. So that will become male to female ratio. Okay, for example, 105 males in an area. So 105 divided by 100 females multiplied by 100. So it will become 105 to 100. Uh, this is what the ratio. Proportion is one segment of the population is divided by the whole population. So uh, in, this, in, in this example, uh, 105 males and 100 females. If uh, I calculate the ratio, I can say that uh, the ratio of male to female here is 105 to 100. Okay. But if uh, I want to calculate the proportion, then 105 male to female, proportion of male in this population. Number of males is the numerator, 105. Total population means number of males and number of females, means 105 plus 100, means 205. So the numerator will be 105. Denominator will be total population, means 105 plus 100, that is 200, 205 multiplied by 100. So this, this will become the proportion. So it will be almost uh, that 51% uh, uh, of the population is of female. This is what the uh, proportion, or in other words, we can say the proportion of male population in this area is 51%. Okay. Then rate is uh, the frequency of an, of an event to occur in a segment of population, in a group of population in a specified time period. So for example, if uh, I say, that uh, as many uh, students uh, has uh, joined the class right now, for example, say uh, 200 students has uh, joined class. So how many of them use glasses? So uh, what is the rate of using glasses in this class? So very easy example that out of this uh, 200, uh, what is the rate? What is the event? What is the frequency of event? Say, 100 uses the glasses. This is the frequency of event, and this will become the numerator divided by total population, which is 200 multiplied by any constant you take 100 or 1000 or whatever. This will become the rate. Okay, uh, the rate of uh, getting fast in this class. So, number of the people's number of the students who fast, and then divided by the total number of the students, and then any constants. So, <coughs> this is what the rate. It is rate, ratio, and proportion. Most of the rates are expressed per thousand in population. For example, in 2010, Pakistan, in Pakistan, there were 29 life births per thousand population. It means out of uh, every thousand population, 29 new people's uh, new children are being uh, born. Crude rates uh, are the rates of entire population. For example, if uh, I say what is the birth rate of Pakistan, this is the crude birth rate of Pakistan. What is the death rates of Pakistan? This is the crude death rate. This will be called the crude death rate of Pakistan. A specific rates are uh, computed for a subgroup. Uh, uh, for example, an area of the Pakistan where the specific birth rate of uh, Karachi, that will become uh, a specific rates and they are computed for a subgroup usually the population more nearly approximating the population at risk, which are how many people uh, are suffering through corona in Karachi. This is uh, the specific rate, but how many people are suffering? Uh, what's the prevalence rate, say, of corona in Pakistan? This will become the true rate. Then there are constant, you see, this may be the 100,000 or 100,000, by which rates, ratios, or proportions can be multiplied to express these measures in a more understood and sustainable fashion. Yeah, yeah, these are being put in. For example, if I say 0 0.035 live births per person occurred in Pakistan in 1997, this is uh, not understandable. But if uh, I multiply this rate yeah, by 100, it will become 3.5 live births. Okay? And if I multiply it by 1000, it will become uh, 35 per 1000 live births. So this is more understandable. So make it simple and to make it understandable, understand it, we put some uh, some constant there to uh, erase these decimals and to find out the rates in the whole figures. These uh, constants are certainly used. Cohort uh, is a group of population uh, that is uh, there in some area. It's a statistic that measures the event occurring through a cohort. 
a group of the people sharing a common experience who are observed through time. This is the birth word, the people who are being birth in 2000, and I'm following them for the next 20 years up till 2020. This is a birth word. For example, I'm following the uh, third year medical student to whom right now I am teaching. So I am following them from their admission uh, in uh, the college up till their graduation. So this is a cohort being followed, or uh, there may be the marriage for the class part, et cetera. Period measures. This is a statistics that measures event occurring to all a part of population during a point in time. For example, that I calculated the rate of using glasses uh, in this class uh, to which I am addressing right now. Uh, so this is what the period measure is, the point prevalence. And then if I uh, calculate it within the last one year, it will become uh, the period, uh, period prevalence. So for example, the births in uh, uh, 2019, deaths in 2019, were the infant mortality rate per thousand. So these are all the period measures. It may be at a point, uh, time, point in time or it may be in a period in one week, in one month or in one year. Population momentum uh, refers uh, to the tendency of a population to continue to grow after replacement level fertility has been achieved. Means uh, if uh, <coughs> the fertility is being two. This is what the replacement table is, that every couple is uh, uh, giving birth to two children. So the two children are being born and two parents are being died. So they replace, there is no increase in the population. So if right now in 2020, Pakistan achieves uh, the uh, fertility rate of replacement table, the increase in population will not uh, stop. This is called the population momentum, that the momentum has been established and it will continue to increase for uh, in the future for many decades. Why? Because those children who has already been born right now in 2020, say uh, if uh, there are one crore children, 10 million children who has born, they will become uh, adult and they will give uh, birth to the children. So uh, the population will continue to decrease, uh, continue to increase. But after 20 years now, the only two children are being born. So after 20 years, those children uh, who are younger, they will be less in number. So then the population will start decreasing. This is called the uh, momentum, population momentum. Population that has achieved replacement or below replacement fertility may still continue to grow for some decades because past high fertility leads to a high concentration of people in the youngest age which will give rise to children, give birth to children. Total births continue to exceed total deaths. As these young become parents, eventually, however, this large group become elderly and deaths increases, then the deaths will outnumber the births and then the population will start to decrease. And this is what happened in China. One family, one child uh, legislation was uh, Past 30 years ago, the birth of population kept on increasing because already born children became that age and they gave rise and they gave birth to the children. But after three decades, the population is start to came on a plateau, sustained level, and then start decreasing. So this is what the population movement and age is structure and the population growth. Age is structure is a demographic engine that drives or retards population growth. In any population, if the uh, adult group of the population will do more, the population will grow. If elder population uh, are uh, more, then the population will decrease. And if the younger population and the children population are less, then the population will decrease. So in many developing countries, large proportions of young people virtually guarantee that the population will continue to grow during the periods of declining fertility. However, fertility declines, but there is a big cohort, big cluster of the young people who will give birth and even after fertility drops to replacement level, the population will continue to increase. This is how see this yellow portion. These uh, people from uh, 15 to 50 or 45, they will, they are continually producing children. So the population will continue to increase and elder population are less. So the death rate will be decreased. Now see again, the green uh, area where the children population less than 15 population they are still more however they are declining decade by decade but they are still more so this green when they will, when they will come in yellow they will again produce children so in this population of china the population will uh, continue to increase but now see this uh, 
population pyramid of uh, China in 2020, 25. Okay, now you see elder population, the red one, they are more, so the death rates will be more. The younger population has, are comparatively less as compared to the uh, red. So uh, the number of children who are being born, they are less as compared to the number of deaths of the elderly people. And then the green number of children are even less than the yellow. So in the next decades, in the future, there will be less number of the younger people, less number of the births again. So the population will start decreasing then. This is what the population uh, momentum is. Now see the population parameter of Pakistan. As you see, uh, very uh, high number of the younger ones, uh, the children, less than 15 years, 43% of our population. This is 1998 uh, uh, population parameter. 43% of population is less than 15 uh, years. 53% are in between 50 to uh, 60 years and they are producing children. Very less number above 60. So number of deaths will, number of deaths will be less. Number of births will be more. And even in future, it guarantees that when these children will become the adult, they will produce more children. So the population will continue to increase in the next decade. Now, this is the again population parameter of uh, Pakistan in 20 and 20, 2020. See, very high number of the adults. So they will 67% increase from 53 to 67%. These red, these children has become adults now. Okay, and now they are producing children. But the children population is decreasing. Birth rate is decreasing from 43. It is almost 29, 14% so decrease. So in the future, less adults will come after 30 years. Uh, these will be 20 years, these will be in this group, and less number of the adults. So in the future, two or three or four decades after, these uh, younger population will be less, and there will be less number of children being born. And uh, if these green then will become here, in the red area, over 60, so the death rate will increase. So the more number will uh, be dying, more people will be dying, less people will be born. So... The uh, birth rate will decline and the birth rate will decline. So we will still experience increase in our population even if right now we drop our birth rate up to the replacement level. So uh, this is what the population uh, momentum is. Importance of data in the study of demographic is knowledge of demographic changes and its interrelationship with aspects of development needs to be based on family and high quality data. Principal data collection systems. If we even don't know what is the total population, what is the younger population, what is the elder population, we will not be able to uh, plan our uh, future plans. So uh, the exact and correct data are very necessary for planning and uh, management. So the different sources of the populations are the census and the vital registration systems and the sample surveys. Census, uh, you know, registration systems. In the registration of the births, the deaths, the graveyard registration, marriage registration, etc. And then different uh, surveys which are being done to find out the different statistics. Uh, these uh, sources uh, provide us the primary means for measuring basic demographic parameters, uh, for example, the size and growth of population, components of uh, growth and vital rates, and as well help uh, in understanding relationships between demographic, health, economics, and the social and environmental issues. So, census uh, was uh, there uh, even in before uh, BC uh, eras. In Egypt, the census were there before uh, BC census was conducted very uh, every other year, which included list of the families and other uh, occupants of houses or uh, certain particular cases, for example, the soldiers in Greek. Uh, Yunnan in the BC areas, all men 18 years above were being counted in the Rome in the BC's eras. An immigration of every family uh, every five years was uh, being done for taxation purposes. In Muslims, uh, the first uh, census was being done by Muhammad uh, uh, in the Medina to find out how many orphans and uh, uh, videos are there for uh, the state and their health. So, uh, this is uh, <coughs> Modern census uh, started uh, in the 17th century, uh, and the first modern census was being uh, uh, conducted in uh, Quebec, Canada, in 1666. Uh, in England, it was done in 1841. In the uh, United States, in 1850, and India combined here at the time, Pakistan and India, 1881. The first census uh, was being there. And, uh, 
During the decades of 1855 to 64, it is estimated that only about 17% of the world's population had actually been counted, but uh, between 1953 and 64, 78% of the world's population, including that of mainland China, was enumerated by census between 1965 and 84. 96% of the population was being uh, counted in uh, different uh, census. Uh, census uh, content, uh, as uh, uh, the previous census was uh, done in 2017 in Pakistan, and you have come across that, uh, we, uh, you, they collect uh, the data, age, sex, migration, fertility, mortality, uh, age, their economic status, the level course, other occupation in which industries, their social information, family type, education, marital status, religion, language, place of birth, their health status, disability, housing characteristics, construction type, number of rooms, water supply, toilet facility, electro electricity, availability, etc., etc. All these uh, are being uh, uh, asked in the census. And uh, the advantage of the census, universal coverage, and a small area uh, data will be available. National effort provides training uh, for latter sample surveys, provides population uh, uh, denominators, disadvantages, size, limits, content equally 